Hi, Trevor here, reflecting on life through music. Thank you for stopping by. Well, coming in again today, you're very, very welcome. How great to see you all back. I trust you enjoyed my last video on Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inductee Gene Pitney. Uh, very unique voice, this guy. It's great to look at him last time. And through his song, Town of Pity, we looked at compassion. So I trust you found that one encouraging. We're well, going from there to London in 1983. Nick Laird Klaus, singer, singer, songwriter, guitarist. Katie St. John, a multi-instrumentalist, Gilbert Gabriel on keyboards. Um, there was a meeting of a band, previous band called The Act, and they, those guys got together and thought, hang on a minute, why don't we try something new? Everybody's doing the same kind of thing. Let's try some strings, some woodwinds, some timpani, some synthesizers, and get a bit of a soundscape happening. They originally called themselves um, the Par Politics of Paradise, but they were soon settled on the name The Dream Academy. And these are the guys we're talking about today. You might be thinking, now what was that song again that those guys did? If you're around in the 1980s, you could not miss this song. This song was absolutely massive. But it took them a bit of a while to get there from 1983 because they were quite different to everything else going around. Between 1983 and 1985, they kind of went getting much luck, lots of rejections from lots of record companies. Then Warner Brothers thankfully said, hey, come on, we'll give you a bit of a go because we actually agree with you. I think life could be a little bit more interesting. And of course, 1985 was a massive, massive, massive year for album releases. You think about Bon Jovi and um, uh, 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 Living on a Prayer. <laughs> so you ought to get the Europe, the final countdown. But many, and many, many, many albums came out in 1985. It was a massive year for albums. And of course, you know, to, to make any, any noise at all in what was quite a cluttered music space, creatively cluttered, let's just call that, to actually cut through with this massive single, Life, Life in the Northern Town, um, just shows that there was space for something a bit different. This song was huge for these guys, went to number seven in the US, number 15 in the UK. This song was produced by Pink Floyd um, genius David Gilmore. So it's good to see that David was getting in the mix of these guys as well. And you know, David, you know, all know how ethereal David's lead guitar solos are, just think of Comfortably Numb as a classic example ethereal space all the rest of it and he was just a guy i'm thinking to produce or co-produce live in the northern town um it's got to number seven in the us and number 15 in the uk so there we go more popular overseas than in their own country but still pretty massive indeed one critic has called, called, called this song because it is very very spacious indeed it's just got a sense of wistfulness about it. We've got timpani in here. We've got oboe in here doing that kind of beautiful counter metal of each stuff. There's a lot of classical musical influences in this song as well. This song, I'm going to use the unique word. I think this song is very, very unique for many, many reasons. Again, it's sense of space, what it's about. We'll get onto that in a little bit and just the way the song sounds. And also the incredible harmonies in this song actually did get um, some... Um, accolades for the industry for how good the harmonies are in this song. Life in the Northern Town, it's all about reminiscing, you know, John F. Kennedy being shot, we've got the Beatles doing what they did, you know, we're talking like 20 years earlier, 1965, the Beatles were massive, uh, getting into their more creative recording studio era of their career. Um, and it's all about, you know, the children drank lemonades, and it was all about long, long mornings and just beautiful ethereal times. And the song just creates a lot of space for that. I think back to my childhood, you might think back to yours. I remember riding my bikes around the streets of, of, of South Australia, Hackham, South Australia, not a care in the world, really, really good fun times. I remember um, a, a Lloyd's truck. Now Lloyd's was home delivery soft drink. They gave us a bottle of drink <laughs> just because they felt like it. I remember cricket in Black Park across the road. I remember being able to stand on my roof and actually see you standing on my roof and standing and actually looking at almond blossom on grapevines for as far as I can see. It's not that anymore. Those days are gone. 
I can remember my house being one of the handy houses on the street because when we moved in, it was um, a bit of a new housing estate. And so, you know, there's sand everywhere. I remember some of the um, inchy winchy little streets back then, roads like Honeypot Road, Panatalinga Road, Panalatinga. <laughs> Funny story there, you know, I grew up um, thinking the road was Panatalinga. <laughs> and someone said to me once, hey, Trev, when's the last time you looked at the sign? It was Panalatinga. But there's a Panatalinga as well. <laughs> Just to make life confusing. Yeah, I remember driving, you know, back in those early days. The streets weren't very wide at all, but it was fun. It was fun, fun, fun. I remember going to the beach. I remember days before air conditioning. <laughs> I remember when colour television came came into the world. Internet, email, all those things weren't around when I was a kid. But, you know, certainly, you know, we would play in the streets and we'd have a great time. We'd all get off the street when there was a car coming and all that sort of stuff. But cars kind of looked out for you too a little bit. You know, the cricket games, the soccer games, the footy games. You know, that my old primary school was is now a funeral parlour. That's that's pretty funny. I remember going across the road to the park, to the, the Oval, and then if you had a really a note from your parents, you went across and got fish and chips from the fish and chip shop. There were simpler times. I remember we remember um, finding a drain pipe under a main road and climbing through the road, and we're getting to this, uh, under the road, and thinking we get to this bit of an intersection, and we're thinking, where do we go now? So we took a bit of a guess, and sure enough, we found our way out. Anyway, I went through that pipe many, many times. Um, over the years, obviously, it was dry, it was raining, there was no water in the pipe, all that sort of stuff. The days just seemed to be simpler. So life in the southern town of Adelaide, as it was back then, was pretty, pretty cool. Um, and I can only picture, if you add the etherealness and just the, the moors and the, and the mist of the northern towns of London... Of, of England, just that beautiful whole feeling of just spaciousness that exists in that part of the world, the rolling hills, the rolling moors, the community feel, all of that. Life was just so much simpler back then um, than it is now. You know, I remember being a parent myself and you know it was a bit of a challenge to let the kids go out on their own. But when I was growing up, we just did what we did. But now life was simpler. It seems to be a little bit more complicated now than it was back then so it's good to reminisce i think on life in a northern town or in my case life in a southern town because in, in where i lived it was kind of a bit of a satellite town of adelaide and now it's all just connected i can remember no traffic lights <laughs> where i was growing up and then all of a sudden got traffic lights in every corner this is just what ha what happens little little laneways become major highways um, and then this is the world that we live in now we got to find spaces for everybody to live, and so it's good to reminisce. So, what about your um, your reminiscing of your childhoods? If you if you were even born in the nineteen eighties, please put some comments below about things that you remember. And if you remember this song, think back to what were you doing back then? Well, what was I doing? Well, I'd finished high school and I was just trying to find out what the world was like. And was just starting to enter the workforce and that's at that time so that was 1985 for me now we're talking nearly 40 years ago if we think next year 2025 40 years ago and if you're feeling really really old <laughs> star wars you know the iconic star wars came out in 1977 so you know it's nearly 50 years and since that movie came out which of course that movie changed the world and I do love the 1980s. We think about movies such as the Back to the Future series. We also think of Roy Raiders of the Last Ark. And of course, Star Wars was well and truly getting into its second and third movies by this point. And so, you now it's Superman, superhero movies. Of course, we've got the iconic Batman movie that came out in 1989. The Batmobile, which you sometimes have seen, have sometimes I have seen behind me. Well, that table is going off, getting a bit of a restoration, and, that, and the Batmobile is kind of sitting there in the corner, looking a little bit sad and dejected. But you know, it's an amazing Lego model. Of course, Batman came out in 1989, which changed the world of superheroes forever. So it's good to reminisce back, I must admit, as we look at life in the northern town. Stunning vocals, stunning song, stunning songwriting, stunning production, stunning instrumental. Just the whole thing is absolutely beautiful. So it's good to look at this sense of wistfulness of life in the northern town. Didn't really get too much further after that. The, lust, the Love Parade came out 
a little bit later, um, the chart are not so well, number 36 in the US and number 68 in the UK. <laughs> These guys just seem to do better overseas than in the home country, even with some about England. <laughs> so there we go. This really captured, I mean, it did pretty well in Australia too, actually. Um, they then embarked on a worldwide tour. Um, oh, by the way, Back to Life in Northern Town, got an official clip. We've got a studio version, and we've also got a choir in Brisbane singing this song as well. So there's three versions of that one. We've also got an official clip of the Love Parade. They embarked on a worldwide tour, including a number of live TV shows, Saturday Night Live, Top of the Pops, which is where the official, the studio version comes from here. They then came out in 1987 with Remembrance Days and 1990, different kind, different kind of weather, actually. And, and then around 1991, they thought, well, we can't really do anything else. Our last album didn't so well, so it's about, I think it's time to give these guys a miss. Uh, they did come back with a bit of a compilation album in 2014 with a, with a new song released there. Uh, they did release three studio albums, two compilation albums and 11 singles, estimated to have sold around 50,000 albums. So, you know, not bad in the scheme of things. Pretty much it was one song that did it for these guys. But I never use the word one hit wonder. No, no, no. These guys did contribute to music in their own small part of the world, in their own small way. And they did make a massive contribution with life in the northern town. So it's good to be able to reflect on these guys today. So the links to those four clips are in the description below. And I've also included my last video from Gene Pitney. So if you want to cap on him, feel free. Well... This is your first time to Life Reflection Stream Music or you come back for another one. Great to see everybody here. Really enjoying the engagement we have been getting. Next time we're going to go on to Herb Albert and the Tijuana Brass. So until then, I'll catch you around. Bye for now.